Ah, yes, let's wade once more into the world of entertainment and see how it is adapting to this hellscape. And you know what? For the most part, the entertainment industry has been one of the more positive things to report on during this whole thing because of the various ways that they are trying to salvage their content and profitability, which primarily has benefited you, the consumer. I mean, they're getting desperate, and what better time to... Take them for all their worth. Yeah. Streaming services and their parent companies have been rushing to release recent films straight to VOD. They've offered more free trial periods for products in order to give people something to do. And they're getting more and more creative when it comes to communal activities revolving around their content. So this is going to be, for the most part, a good news news dump. Well, yeah, you've been asking for some good news. Yeah, here's a little bit of good news. Yeah, case in point, a virtual film festival. Yeah. Hey! Uh, if you remember, about three years ago in early March of 2020, we spoke about the fact that Austin, Texas had completely canceled South by Southwest like a week before it was supposed to be. Yeah. Out. That's a festival that promotes the latest in tech, comedy, film, music. Uh, and it's also an extremely vital part of the local economy down in Austin. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't attend this festival, it serves as a springboard for new and upcoming films and bands to do showcases and grab the attention of consumers and major studios and or record labels. At least for the film side of things, there's been a recent announcement that will bring a scaled-down version of the South by Southwest Film Festival straight into your homes. If you've never been, you're not missing much because it's just a lot of lines for press. But now you get to do it without any of that. I saw Spring Breakers at South by like, I, yeah, I was in that a month before well. it came out. That, that felt really cool. Yeah. So the team behind South by has collaborated with Amazon Prime Video to launch a 10-day completely free virtual film festival for everyone to enjoy. It's going to be scheduled sometime later this month, and the film festival will be open to any filmmakers whose movies were scheduled to appear at the canceled festival back in March. And it looks like everything's just going to stream directly to Amazon Prime so that people can all watch at the same time. Uh, the, film's, uh, or the festival's film director, Janet Pearson, said the following about the project via press release. Ever since South by Southwest was canceled by the city of Austin, we've been focused on how we could help the incredible films and filmmakers in the South by Southwest 2020 Film Festival lineup. We were delighted when Amazon Prime Video offered to host an online film festival and jumped at the opportunity to connect their audiences to our filmmakers. We're inspired by the adaptability and resilience of the film community as it searches for creative solutions in this unprecedented crisis. So far, there's no confirmed lineup, and this, you know, completely relies on the filmmakers to give clearance for their projects to be streamed, but we would assume there'll be a decent-sized mix of things to watch whenever the dates are set. Uh, we'll keep you updated on this as news develops. I mean, like, a lot of these movies, it's like, it's not like they got any other options. Yeah, everything's not a lot of options. Canceled. Yeah, I mean, I, it, obviously this is going to be more uh, indie films that were looking for distribution, like something you'd see at, like, a Sundance. Whereas South by Southwest's film festival part of their programming does rely pretty heavily on getting sneak peeks at big budget movies as well. Yeah. Probably not going to happen on that side of things, but it'll be cool to see a bunch of indie films and everyone kind of gets to watch it together. And it's over the course of 10 days, so they're not just smashing it in everyone's face and saying, just binge the hell out of it. I mean, this, th honestly, like this, this could be a sort of like fucking trending topic where like everyone's fucking watching a bunch of yeah, I mean, it brand could. new movies all at once, and uh, it's, it has the potential to have bring way more attention to this festival than it would normally get, and specifically the movies that premiere there with that that wouldn't otherwise have a huge audience. Yeah. Um, speaking of the uh, movie industry adapting to our current messed up reality, some independent theater chains have recently formed an alliance with Magnolia Pictures, which will allow them to screen their movies from. Right, right into your home, while also allowing the virtual ticket cost to benefit both the studio behind the film, but also your favorite theater chains as well. Currently, Magnolia Pictures is offering up two of their theatrical releases for streaming. That's The Whistlers and Once We're Brothers. Now, hopefully this catches on and more studios follow suit, because this is a great way to support your local indie movie theaters, while also getting to watch movies that you would have gone to those theaters to see anyway if you weren't living under quarantine. As of right now, all you need to do is go to the Magnolia Pictures website. We'll leave a link in the description below. Then you find your local spot or one that you would like to support. That's all from their list of supported theaters. Uh, like I said, they have tons of links on their website. You just rent the movie that you want to watch, and 50% of the net proceeds will go directly to that theater. Uh, some theaters, most notably Alamo Draft House, they're offering uh, a bunch of other indie movies as well. So definitely check out what they have to offer if... Uh, your local indie theater isn't playing more than just the Magnolia Pictures. I think they're screening five or six right now on the Alamo uh, website. Yeah, and Alamo's doing their like uh, their weekly 
kind of like bad movies series oh, as cool. well. Like yeah. shitty. The like, Pancake Theater? Or? Yeah, the whole like horror movies and, and like foreign movies. That's like, cool and, too. Yeah, I, I got an email from them. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so it's a win-win. You can sleep soundly knowing that you're supporting the films themselves as well as the theaters who are getting hit real hard right now. Yeah. Even the biggins. Cinemark is like looking into uh, probably going bankrupt. So... Uh, yeah, support your local indie theaters, folks. Yeah. Now, on the streaming network side of things, it looks like HBO and Warner Brothers will be opening up a decent-sized portion of their library for people to stream for free through the HBO Go and HBO Now apps. Starting April 3rd, for a limited time, people will be able to stream without a paid membership, uh, programming that includes nine iconic HBO series such as The Sopranos, Veep, Six Feet Under, and The Wire. I mean, that's... So that's a lot, that's right enough there. to get you through a long time. Yeah, also, major WB movies from HBO's catalog like Detective Pikachu, Lego Movie 2, and Crazy Stupid Love. And they're also going to be offering up 10 HBO documentaries, including McMillions, which is fantastic, and also a follow-up to the famed serial podcast, The Case Against Adnan Syed. Now, according to their press release, quote, all of the programming will be available to stream without a subscription starting Friday by downloading the HBO Now or HBO Go apps or by visiting hbonow.com or hbogo.com. The content will also be made available for free via participating distribution partners platforms in the coming days. So I would imagine if you're a paid Hulu subscriber that has HBO locked on or available or Roku has the app, I'm yeah. sure you'd be able to access it there as well. Yeah. As for fans of live theater, mm -hmm. all you Joel Rubens out there, Universal has started offering up streamed versions of Broadway and West End plays and musicals. On Thursday of this week, Universal announced a new YouTube channel called The Show Must Go On, where they will be uploading several performances on a weekly schedule every Friday at 2 p.m. starting this week, where they're releasing a full direct-to-video adaptation of Andrew Lloyd Webber's Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat, mm -hmm. followed by next week's release, Jesus Christ Superstar. That's perfectly timed for Easter. Go, 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 Joseph! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah, uh, speaking of Andrew Lloyd Webber and Universal, we recently informed you, uh, all of you out there, and everyone, people that didn't even want to know about it, that a butthole, cat, butthole cut of cats probably exists, at least in some form. According to anonymous sources who worked in the digital effects section of the film, the rumor was sort of true. Meaning, yeah, a few of the cats looked like they had buttholes or genitalia, and they had to spend hours making it less offensive. Well, thanks to April Fool's Day this year, an actual butthole cut of cats really does exist. A fan edit was released on the international holiday where the YouTube channel and comedy group XVP Comedy had re-edited the entire trailer for the movie Cats by painstakingly going through each frame and adding buttholes to all of the anthropomorphic felines uh, whenever it did make sense. I mean, I was actually kind of shocked to see how many times these cats bent over just in the trailer. I was trying to remember in the movie whether or not I saw uh, an opportunity for buttholes to actually yeah. exist. But when you see the trailer with the buttholes added on, it really shows you how gratuitous this is. Yeah, I mean, that was one of many kind of subtler reasons why that horror, that, that trailer was so weird and mm -hmm. horrifying when it yeah. dropped. But uh, cool, now you get to see it with buttholes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. And it's hilarious. And yes, it's very stupid, but we're glad it exists now so that everyone can get over their weird obsession with the cat's butthole cut because... I swear, this is as good as it's ever going to get, even if they re-edited the entire movie. Yeah, you're, you're seeing the best stuff. Yeah, you're seeing the best parts with the buttholes added. It's everything anyone needs. Do you even really need it, though? But it's nothing <laughs> more than that. If you're not content with just buttholes, though, the team behind the video also added in a few nips as well. Uh, we don't want to risk showing it here because maybe those are human buttholes. Yeah, maybe and... they took a picture of their own assholes to use as reference. I'm yeah, not sure. I... Who's to say? But rest assured, a link to the butthole cut can be found in the description below. Yeah. Now, as far as movies having their dates shuffled because of COVID-19, here's the latest updates. Universal has moved the upcoming release of Minions, The Rise of Gru. They've moved that uh, back an entire year from July 3rd, 2020 to July 2nd, 2021. A long time. Mm -hmm. All those Minion heads out there, very, very upset, I'm sure. Uh, the cautiously anticipated sequel to Top Gun that's also been moved from its initial release date of June 24th. Uh, it's not going back a full year, but it is going back uh, quite a ways. It'll now premiere in theaters on December 23rd of this year. So Christmas. A fun Christmas movie. So far, the last of the huge summer 2020 movie blockbusters that's still scheduled to be released on the day that it's supposed to be is Christopher Nolan's Tenet. That has not been shifted by Warner Brothers yet. 
It's still scheduled to hit theaters on July 17th, but that can and most likely will change at some point in the very near future. I wouldn't count on it. Uh, now, lastly, on our somewhat good news portion of this episode, LeVar Burton has officially figured out how to live stream and will be bringing what is essentially Reading Rainbow to people around the world via social media. Starting this Friday, he'll be doing live streams on a set schedule that will include read-alongs for both adults, teens, and children. He'll be streaming three times a week for the aforementioned age ranges directly to Twitter starting, like we said, this Friday, today, I guess, at yeah. 6 p.m. Pacific. Here's how the schedule looks. The Mondays will be for children and the streams will start at 9 a.m. Pacific. Wednesdays, he'll be reading young adult books starting at 3 p.m. Pacific. And Fridays will be for the adults. Put the kids to bed. Starting at 6 p.m. Pacific. Sorry, kids, you're going to bed early tonight. Yeah. LeVar Burton's going to read me some pornography. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you would hope that the books for adults would consist primarily of, like, romance novels and erotica. That's almost certainly not the case. No. But imagine if it was. LeVar Burton reads hentai and shows yeah. the pictures to the audience. Yeah. Wow. Look what that octopus is doing to that nice woman's vagina. All right, anyways, now over to the bad news. Sorry, everyone. And the bad news mm. this week consists of video games. So far during the quarantine, we've been at least able to play a few great titles. And you've probably revisited some old favorites as well. But the future of the video game landscape is starting to look pretty bleak. By now, you're probably aware that most major titles are, you know, they're in development almost up until the release date. These games go gold like three weeks out. Yeah. Uh, these, the last few weeks and months of developing a game, that's crunch time, baby. We've been over this. And right now, these studios literally can't have their teams together to work on these projects. So it comes as no surprise that there will be delays. You're telling me video game development is not an essential business? And it's also, I mean... I, I understand that there's a lot that probably could be done remotely yeah. alone, but mm. not everything. Yeah. Not everything. Anyway, there will almost certainly be huge delays across the board with more and more announcements regarding these delays releasing over the next few weeks and months. But at least one major title has already announced that uh, you're not going to get to play their highly anticipated title anytime soon. No. Nope. In an announcement made on Twitter, Sony and Naughty Dog recently, they said that... The Last of Us Part 2 has officially been delayed and it won't be making its scheduled release date of May 29th. Here's what they said. Fuck. As you've likely just seen, the release of The Last of Us Part 2 has been delayed. We're sure this news is just as disappointing to you as it is to us. We wanted to reach out to all of you in our community to give you a little more information. The good news is we're nearly done with development. We're in the midst of fixing our final bugs. However, even with us finishing the game, we were faced with the reality that due to logistics beyond our control, we couldn't launch Last of Us 2 to our satisfaction. We want to make sure everyone gets to play around the same time, ensuring that we're doing everything possible to preserve the best experience for everyone. This meant delaying the game until such a time where we can solve these logistic issues. Man. Yeah. It's like, it's like the perfect game for this situation, too. Like it's yeah, it's a bit bleak, but yeah, it's a well, great it's game. It's literally about like an uh, airborne disease that mm -hmm. like destroys humanity. Like uh, We didn't think the tone was right. right yeah, now. every time I go to the supermarket, I feel like I'm playing The Last of Us, like going out and getting supplies. I feel like I'm in World War Z and everyone's <laughs> yeah. just clamoring over each other to get to the checkout line. Yeah. It's terrible. That's why I'm not going back after the last time I went. Yeah, I stocked up today. It was scary. Yeah. But I made it. Anyway, yeah, that, that delay, real bummer yes. for everyone who was excited to dive back into that world, which I would assume is most 99 people of who gamers, play video yeah. games. Yeah. Uh, it's an announcement that we anticipate seeing a lot more of, though, from other studios in the near future. Game studios, like most other businesses, are having to cope with this lockdown. And even though we're sure that some of the work can be done from home, it's almost certainly going to cause internal delays, which will end up pushing back street dates. I, I'm looking at you, Cyberpunk. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I don't think they're going to make the well, release date. The good news for a lot of fall releases, a lot of fall releases are all the uh, yearly sports release titles. No need. No need to do that anymore. Get, get to work on the 2022 version. Yeah, yeah exactly. And make it extra good. Mm -hmm. So that might be great. Uh, anyways, that's it for us uh, for News Dump this week. We tried to keep it as positive as possible. And if that was just too much good news for you, well, get ready. Because Weekly Weird News tomorrow is going to have a lot more got, strange, sad, yeah, it's got weird. a lot of stuff happening. Yeah, there's going to be a lot. Anyway, stay tuned for Weekly Weird News coming up very soon. Yeah. In the meantime, watch our most recent episode of Tech News Day over here. And also, uh, we had the guys from Funhouse on our live stream this week. There's 90 minutes of us chatting it up with Adam Kovic and James Willems uh, right there for you to enjoy. 
Yeah. Yeah. Stay safe out there. Don't stick your hand in an oven when it's turned on. And uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye.